there's something psychological about seeing a body that has been badly mutilated, right? It's almost harder to imagine some of these things when we're talking about the blessing of a person and the way that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is treating them, the, uh, the goodness that is expected for them, especially when you see just how fragile the body actually is and if the body has been badly uh, dealt with or mutilated or you know was in a bad car accident. <laughs> Imagine the Muslims after Uhud, right? And Uhud was a very unique experience for the Muslims. There was nothing like Uhud prior to or after uh, for the Prophet ﷺ and for the companions of the Prophet ﷺ. The way that Hamza radiallahu ta'ala anhu, Sayyid al-Shuhada, the chief of the martyrs was dealt with, his body was dealt with, right? It's, it's gruesome, truly gruesome. The Prophet wasallam says, that when your brothers at Uhud were killed, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put their souls in the bodies of green birds. And those green birds then, the, the Sahaba that passed away in Uhud, whose souls are in those bodies, those green birds then fly to the rivers of Jannah. They eat from the fruits of Al-Jannah. They perfectly nestle into these lamps of gold that are under the shade of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's throne. Allahu Akbar. Imagine that life, that existence, right? So they are going around everywhere, enjoying not just the reward of shahada, but I mean, you're talking about shuhada uhud that have amongst them Sayyid al-Shuhada Hamza radiallahu ta'ala anhu. And so after they have enjoyed, you know, tasting the sweetness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's reward, they have rested, they are you know, enjoying this existence, this incredible existence that they now have, they asked, who is going to tell our brothers about the blessing that we are in right now, about how we are alive in paradise, taken care of, and we want them to know that so that they, they're not discouraged from striving in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and continuing to be steadfast in battle. So who's going to go back and tell all those people that wailed over the bodies of the shuhada of Uhud, right? The large gatherings of wailing that took place over the shuhada of Uhud, the darkness that overcame Medina. Who's gonna go back and tell everyone in Medina that we're okay? And what does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ana uballighuhum ankum. I will tell them for you. Allah will tell them, meaning us, and particularly the Sahaba in Medina, on behalf of those shuhada. And that's when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent down the ayat in Surah Ali Imran, وَلَا تَحْسَبَنَّ الَّذِينَ قُتِلُوا فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ أَمْوَاتَ بَلْ أَحْيَاءٌ عِنْدَ رَبِّهِمْ يُرْزَقُونَ Do not say of those who are killed in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that they are dead. Rather, they are alive with their Lord, rejoicing in His sustenance, rejoicing in His bounty. فَرِحِينَ بِمَا آتَاهُمُ اللَّهُ مِنْ فَضْلِ They are blessed with what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has provided to them. Nothing that they could have had in this world could match it. And you know what else? وَيَسْتَبَشِرُونَ بِالَّذِينَ لَمْ يَلْحَقُوا بِهِمْ مِنْ خَلْفِهِمْ And they're waiting for those to join them who have not yet passed into that realm as they have passed. أَلَّا خَوْفٌ عَلَيْهِمْ وَلَا هُمْ يَحْزَنُونَ There is no fear upon them, nor shall they grieve. Some of the scholars, they mention khawf is upon that fear, meaning for that which is to come, grieving with that which you've left behind. Remember when the Prophet Sallallahu uh, mentions the angels coming to a person at death and Allah Azza wa even mentions as the angels come upon the person, the believer, when the believer is dying, may Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala make us amongst them. And they say, Allah takhafu wa la tahsanu. Don't be afraid of what is to come. Do not grieve of that which you have left behind. So this incredible existence of the shuhada, and I'm starting with the shuhada for a reason, right? That have their souls in the bodies of green birds, and they're certainly not like the green birds that we've seen in this life, okay? That are going around flying and experiencing some form of Jannah, not its full form, some form of Jannah in their existence that are nestled under the throne of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in these gold lamps. What an incredible existence. And that's some context to the very famous death of Sa'd ibn Mu'adh radiallahu ta'ala anhu, where the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said, ihtazza arsh al-Rahman, that the throne of the most merciful shook 
for the death of Sa'd ibn Mu'adh radiallahu ta'ala anhu. And the scholars say it didn't shake out of trauma or out of fear or because the death of Sa'd radiallahu anhu somehow you know, disturbed the equilibrium of the universe and the existence of things even outside of this universe and our comprehension. It's the same thing as when the tree that the Prophet وسلم, used to give khutbah next to cried after the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam left it. It's, it's a, a joy that the soul of Sa'ad was going to return to the throne of the Lord in that perfectly nestled golden lamp that Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala had prepared for the soul of Sa'ad radiAllahu Ta'ala Anhu. So where are they? Where are the righteous souls? If these are the souls of the shuhada, where are the righteous souls? Well, certainly the shuhada have a special place. They have a special place with Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala. And some of the scholars, they said that these ahadith are specifically related to the shuhada, the martyrs. And some of them said that it's to the believers in general, and some said it's special believers amongst whom the shuhada are the most special, right? But we also have the hadith of Isra' wal Mi'raj, where the Prophet ﷺ is meeting the prophets in the heavens, their souls in the heavens, but also the Prophet ﷺ says, Marartu ala qabri Musa, I passed by the grave of Moses, of Musa alayhi salam, and he was praying in his grave. So how do we understand this? Let's go to the hadith where the Prophet ﷺ describes the initial coming into the grave of the believers. The Prophet ﷺ says in one of those narrations, ثُمَّ يُفْسَحُ لَهُ فِي قَبْرِهِ That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala expands him in his grave. And in one authentic narration, the Prophet ﷺ says, سَبْعُونَ ذِرَاعًا فِي سَبْعِينَ 70 yards by 7 yards. Does that mean in you know, the physical ground as we see at the earth, that if you were to go back in there, it would have expanded 70 by 70? And then the Prophet وسلم, says, Thumma you know what lahu fi. And then it is lit up. Remember what the dua for Abu Salama was? Right? Wafsah lahu fi qabrihi wa nawur lahu fi. To expand the grave and to put light in his grave. Here, the Prophet وسلم, is showing us the effect of that, that the grave has been expanded to 70 by 70, and there is a light that comes into the grave. And then it is said to that person, What? Nam, sleep. <laughs> Go to sleep. And you know, you just got to your, your home in paradise, or in at least a chamber or a garden of paradise, not a chamber of hellfire. But the angels say, Nam, go to sleep. And what does the person say? He says, Arji'u ila ahli, but how about I go back to my family? Can I go tell my family, فأخبرهم? and I can tell them that I'm okay. I know that they're worried about me, and they're probably, you know, wanting to know what's happened with me. So now that I passed the test, I answered the three questions and my grave has become a garden of paradise as they were making dua for me. And, you know, I'm, I'm smelling the scent of paradise and I have the light and I've, I've found that promise of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala here. Can I just go tell my family I'm okay? Right? You know, after the excitement settles in that you passed, don't you want to just give them a call and say, hey, look, I know you guys were crying at my funeral. I know you were worried. I'm okay, alhamdulillah. And the angels say, nam, go to sleep. And then they say to that person, sleep like a groom or a bride who is only to be awoke by those that are most beloved to them. That, you know, the time will come for you to be woken up, but for now, go ahead and sleep. So that person's grave, Ibn Dayta is a garden of Jannah. And that person, the Prophet ﷺ says, sees their place in Jannah, sees their actual garden in Jannah uh, twice a day, in the morning and in the evening. And it could be, you know, of course, for the wicked person, a chamber of fire, and they would be exposed to it day and night. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us and protect our loved ones from that. Allahumma ameen. So what's the conclusion that we could come to here in terms of where the souls are? So if the grave is not like that, and, you know, the Prophet sallallahu is talking about the souls and the bodies of green birds, and the Prophet sallallahu is seeing Musa alayhi in Asra' wal Mi'raj in the heavens at one point, and then seeing him in his grave praying at another point, and then we're talking about 70 by 70, how do we understand all of this? There is no doubt that a connection remains to the grave of this world, meaning the physical location has a connection to that person's soul. There's still a connection there. However, that person is not limited by its dimensions. That grave is not limited by the worldly dimensions anymore, the same way that the soul is no longer limited by the dimensions of the body, okay? So there's still a connection between the soul and the location of the grave, but the grave is not limited the way that we would see it limited, and the soul is no longer limited 
by the body and we pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us to be like those whose souls are placed in the bodies of green birds nestled in gold lamps under the throne of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala roaming the rivers of al-jannah and eating from its fruits.